Hi everyone and welcome to my Super PID installation video. I've started by pulling my router apart. I'm just using a, an old Black & Decker router. It's over 30 something years old, probably about 35 years old. It um, is also faulty in that the, the fan that usually sits on this armature, at the bottom of the armature here, is missing basically because it, it broke and fell apart. You'll see on one of my earlier videos um, how I uh, resolved that issue. So what I've done is I've got my armature here and I've now been and painted the top of the shaft with a uh, part black, part white. And this is for the sensor to pick up on. I've also taken the top of the router and I've drilled this hole through it and as you can see hopefully you can see into the body of there there it is that's the bearing where the bearing normally sits so if everything's worked out right when I assemble this when we look down through this hole here we should be able to see that uh, changing to black and white as it rotates so I'll just get it quickly assembled now and we'll have a look as you can see looking down through my hole there as the shaft rotates, you can see the um, hole changing from black to white, so that should work good for us. Um, with the Super PID kit came this tube, clear plastic tube, which I've drilled the hole, it's a 9.5mm hole, and that I'll be able to drop the sensor down. Now what I've done next is I've taken the piece of tubing that was supplied with the kit, and the sensor and I have put a cable tie on the sensor so that the sensor cannot get below the end of the tube there that way if it ever gets pushed too far down onto the router it shouldn't get to the point where it actually rubs up against the sensor and uh, damages it so this should just push in here nicely there I'm I just want to go down to I'm just above it and then come up a little bit I want to get as close as I can to it without actually hitting it and now I've got these here uh, those who have seen the earlier video will have recognized these as my uh, cooling system for this router because the internal fan is no longer working. This works really well and I'm hoping as well uh, in conjunction with the Super PID it'll actually keep the router cool even when it's running at, at minimum 5000 RPM. I've drilled a hole in here which lines up with this tube so when this pushes over I should just push over and fit onto the router like so. Now the sensor will be able to just drop down into this tube here and hopefully just sit there. I won't need to secure it any more than that and it should be able to get the reading. So if I ever need to remove the router I can just pull this out and, and shouldn't need to do anything else to it. Right, so here's what's been achieved so far. The router has been mounted in its uh, clamp. The two fans, the fan units on top of the router. I've now run and cable tied the, the wires back onto the XZ axis. 
I've just removed the fans here for the moment. So here's a tube for the Super PID that's in place. And here's the sensor for it, which will just drop down the hole there. And will rest on that cable tie so it can't get damaged by the spinning shaft. And the fans will mount back in here, like so. Right. So the fans provide the cooling air to the spindle because it has no fan. These fans will put out about 40 cubic feet of air per minute each. So that's around about 80, probably realistically about 60 cubic feet of air being pushed through the router continuously. They're just powered from 12 volts. My temperature sensor is now mounted back onto the body of the router as well to monitor its temperature and to make sure it doesn't overheat that will shut everything down should the fans fail for whatever reason. I've taken the wiring for the Super PID up here around. They've traveled up and over my um, cable carrier here and then they've dropped into the X rail and it continues its way down and finally comes out of the X rail there this is where I plan to put the super PID unit so hence I brought the cable out here and by bringing it uh, along inside the aluminium channel here it not only protects the cable uh, but also provides a little bit of shielding as well because I'm going to run power through the remainder of the channel. I suppose one of the advantages of having a CNC machine is if you need a box for a project it's simple enough to make one. This is my one made out of um, MDF and I've installed the Super PID into it. I've put a piece of 4.5mm uh, perspex on the front to protect it all. Right, now I've done my initial testing with it and I've, found, I've run into a problem. The sensor is not close enough to the area of shaft that I've painted and I cannot get the sensor any closer to it because um, the, the uh, armature shaft is sticking out and um, if, if I run the sensor down past that it'll just wear the sensor away the, the lifespan of the sensor will be measured in uh, seconds basically so I'm going to come up with another idea for uh, for uh, the sensor right here's the problem I'm encountering with uh, the sensor this is the top the, the shaft on the armature and it has a bearing sitting down here and there's also about three millimeters of armature shafts that's sitting above the bearing and the hole where I've drilled the hole in the top of the router case I can see just a small amount of the top of this shaft and this part of the bearing here I can't allow the sensor to go past the shaft because the side of the shaft will rub on the sensor and I'm not close enough to this part of the bearing which I painted for it to uh, show up properly so the solution I've come up with is this this is basically just a, a small piece of acetal I have machined it down on the lathe so one side is recessed and will just sit on top of the bearing like this when it's sitting on top of the shaft, I won't push it down hard onto the shaft until I'm ready. Um, and then when I'm looking through the hole, I'll see this large piece of plastic here that's changing from black to white. The sensor should have absolutely no trouble seeing that. Here's the uh, plastic piece I machined up installed on the armature. I'm having to do this uh, on the CNC machine itself because everything's cable tied in place and I really don't want to have to un untie everything so uh, it shouldn't be too much of a hassle putting it back together came apart pretty easily 
I took the old, took the bearing off, cleaned all the paint off around it, and put the new piece on. And I gave it an extra coat of paint, making sure that half the shaft was was um, black as well. Okay, I'll put the machine back together. And as you can see there, there's white, black. I'm hoping this here will work a lot better. Right now I've reassembled the router. Got my tube in here and it's only just sitting fractionally above my spinning disc. And here's the sensor. Now I've done one wee mod to the sensor. I've got the cable ties on it to stop it going below the end of the thing and rubbing on the below the end of the tube and rubbing on the uh, um, disc I made. But I've also put on a couple of tiny little o-rings as well and they are so when it pushes down into the tube it'll grip right so I'll push that down here now so it'll stop the cable from raising out of its own accord okay that's now in place let's have a look and see um, how well it works. Here we are looking back at the uh, spindle view on the Super PID. I'll just zoom in on there a bit. Right, now this time I'm going to turn the spindle shaft and there we go. Now we've got a decent reading. It goes virtually up to the top and back down again. So that's uh, a vast improvement over where it was, that's for sure. This time the thing should uh, fire up and work properly. We'll give it a try. That's much better, at least That seems to be working fine. Before when I tried it um, and turned it on it would say motor starting and then it would go motor fail. The, the motor would rev up to full uh, RPM and that would come back and say motor had failed. So um, it's obviously a lot happier now. It obviously wasn't seeing the sensor before but now it's sitting at about a nice 5000 RPM. Rightio, next job will be to try it out when cutting. Here's the finished uh, cutting of the of the perspex. It's come out looking pretty good. Uh, nice edge, no uh, no melting at all. Uh, so I'm quite pleased with that. Uh, testing with perspex is pretty good. That's uh, was cut at 35 inches a minute at 8,000 rpm. Right now I'm going to do a quick test cut uh, on a piece of 12 mm DF using a six millimeter 
cut a bit and I've set the speed on the Super PID to 12,000 RPM. Uh, pretty good looking cut quality the cut out the uh, one of the, the holding tabs broke at the end of it there so didn't do it any favors but uh, until it broke that's very good Post tabs holding last. And again, there's the cut quality there. That's uh, very nice cutting, actually. I'm uh, I'm pleased with that. The router didn't seem to be struggling at all. It kept a constant uh, 12,000 RPM as I asked it to. Um, on the whole, I'm very pleased with it.